Thank you very much for Thank receiving us. Thank you very much for coming here, and uh, I truly appreciate it. Uh, Australia is geographically a far country, but emotionally and culturally, we feel attached to Australia. I think probably because of the similarities between Australia and Syria when I went there, and so people from all ethnicities, from all religions living together beautifully, uh, I felt this is an echo of the life that we live, we used to live in Syria, <laughs> because now some people are trying to disrupt this rhythm and, and this social structure of, of our life. Uh, I spent five years as a minister of expatriates. It's no exaggeration to say that my trip to Australia was the one that left the most lasting and the most pleasurable impression on me, on my colleagues, and on my son <laughs> also. So I welcome you, and I appreciate the, the effort. I know how difficult it is and costly to come all the way uh, to see what's happening. Uh, I wish uh, that the high-level politicians would do the same. I think this is their first obligation instead of uh, uh, following the blogs and uh, media website to come to the place and see uh, what is happening. I remember once I was talking about Palestine, you know, and I said Palestine is not on the moon. I mean, people can go and see what's happening there instead of uh, guessing uh, what's happening or believing one source uh, uh, or another. I saw you met with the Prime Minister and you met with Faisal Maqdad and I really don't want to waste your time to rehash anything that you've heard. So I would like to say to you only two or three things and then I will leave it up to you to tell me what you would like to ask and what would you like to hear, what are the things that you still have questions in your mind because after seeing my colleagues. As a mother and as a woman, I feel that what has happened to Syria is a huge crime uh, against our people. Um, Syrian people, uh, like all people in the world, care about their integrity, about their dignity, about their family life. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the, the damage that has been done to our families, to our way of life, to our identity is huge. And um, I can't, one thing I can't understand how Western forces who claim to be democratic and care about human rights, how can they be in the same line with Al-Qaeda, with Jibhat al-Nasra, with terrorists who, who are really horrifying? We've never uh, seen such a thing in Syria. Syria is 10,000 years old, but this has never ever happened before in Syria. And I'm going to tell you just one story about, you know, apart from the uh, what's happening to our women in Turkey, what's happening to our women in Jordan, and I'm sure you heard about it. You heard about selling women for Saudi uh, people for $100 or for $500, uh, and in Lebanon taking children and taking their kidneys or, uh, you know, uh, what you call it, the trade in human parts, you know, but, but from, from people who are alive. Uh, uh, sometimes people, because of the poverty, have to sell their kidney in order to be able to, to live and, and feed their children. I don't want to, again, to also tell you that thousands of schools have been destroyed. Our life, you know, now that it's a Christmas, although I'm a Muslim woman, uh, my daughters and my son are here for Christmas and for the New Year because it is a festivity that we as Muslims celebrate. It is in our culture. It's not, you know, it's not just uh, religious. It's, it's cultural. And uh, as Muslims, we believe in one God. Uh, you know, we believe we all belong to the same God, uh, whether we are Jews or Christians or Muslims. It's the same God that 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 created all of us. I would like to tell you what happened in Adra, uh, you know, near Damascus, last Wednesday, not this Wednesday, the Wednesday before, when the armed gangs went in. A woman uh, called Maysoon Mhalla, a mother of two kids, uh, one is 17 and one is four. She is the deputy director of municipality in Adra. So for the last 18 months, people were displaced people were coming from Duma, from Joburg, coming to Adra. 
And as a woman who is responsible for a municipality, she made it her cause in life to uh, provide them with houses, with electricity, with water, to have sewage services. Uh, her sister was saying to her, go to Latakia, you know, move your job to Latakia. You don't know who these people are coming from Duma because Duma is a hot place in, in, in the rural area of Damascus. She was saying, no, these are really nice people and poor people and we want to help them and if every one of us is going to go and leave the country, to whom do we leave the country? We can't, you know, leave our responsibilities. However, on Wednesday, when the armed gang attacked Duma, uh, attacked Adra, when the terrorists came, she was looking out of her window. Her family was speaking to her at night and saying to her, you know, try to go to somebody's house. No, 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 I, I served them, nobody would touch me. I was all the time, they all know me. And then she looked out of her window and she saw them butchering people and hanging the heads on trees, you know, just like uh, on the tree, like a uh, Christmas a tree. And then she became terrified. And then she sat with her husband and children and said, what if they attacked us and butchered our children in front of us? What are we going to do? Uh, they decided, their son is 17, they decided that if their door was attacked, they have a bomb. She has a bomb in her car, because just in case something happened to her, because she was driving all the time, Damascus Adra. She said to him, look, let us just use this bomb and explode ourselves. I can't see my children butchered in front of me. He said, I can't see you raped in front of me by terrorists. And at about 12 o'clock, she called her family and she said, look, my children are in my lap. We made our decision. They, they are all hearing me. If they attacked our house, we're going to explode ourselves. We're not going to allow them. We can't, we can't see our children butchered in front of us. And that's what happened. That was the last phone call. And next morning we heard that they used the bomb, the four were killed, and plus eight terrorists who were coming and attacking them. The question I'm asking is, how terrible is the other alternative for a mother to put her children and husband and decide to kill herself and her children rather than be in the hands of the terrorists? And I'm giving you the name. The woman is Maithun Mhalla. Her husband is Nizar Hassan. She is an engineer. Her son is Bushir, 17, and her son is Karim, 4. And I saw her sister. And, and you know, I took all the information from her sister, who, was, of course, has a nervous breakdown, because the sister is a sister, and their children are children. My family is in homes now. Now I have my daughters and son with me. My sister cannot come to visit me, because the, the road in Adra has the snipers from the terrorists who would kill anybody. So, you know, this is not to say, I'm not saying that we didn't have loopholes, we don't have 1,000 things which we have to reform and to correct. But the objective of killing and butchering people and destroying the country is not to reach democracy. It's not to reach freedom for the Syrian people. It's not to help the Syrian people. This is another story. It could be using whatever you know, deficiencies we have in our system, and we have, of course, but it's not in order to improve the system or to improve the country. You ask any Syrian anywhere, what would you love be best? He would say to go back three years ago, before all this started, and to live in a safe country, and to be, I don't want anything in the world. I don't care what you do with politics. I just want to go back to the Syria I know to live in a, in a safe place and be you know, in security with my family and with my children. Uh, you know, those who are speaking, Robert Ford, and those people who are living in Five Stars Hotels, what do they care? Syria doesn't mean anything to them. The Syrian people do not mean anything to them. Unfortunately, even this cheap opposition who is sitting under the thumb of Robert Ford and the Americans and the Saudis, do not, haven't been to Syria for 30 years. They don't know what's in Syria. They don't care about that, what, what's, happening, uh, what's happening to Syria. And even if we go to Geneva and sit with them, they have no clue how this ground could be corrected. 
how this, what is happening on the ground can be corrected. I'm sure you all are scholars. I'm sure you read uh, Muhammad bin Nawaf bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud in New York Times on the 17th of December. He said, Saudi Arabia will go it alone. You know, an article on the 17th of December. You can look it up. In which he said, whatever it takes, Saudi Arabia is going to fight militarily, economically, in every single way in order to bring the regime of Bashar al-Assad down. Of course, the objective, in our opinion, in the eyes of the, of the Syrian people, is not the regime of Bashar al-Assad. The objective is the destruction of Syria, because they destroyed our factories, they destroyed our schools, they destroyed our pipeline. They, they're destroying our life. They're destroying the social uh, structure of, of, of our life, our identity. Uh, you know, now if somebody died, very few people will go to pay condolences because people can't go. A friend of mine, Mohammed Khatib, our ambassador to Malaysia, just lost his wife yesterday. Usually, I would be in Latakia today to pay my condolences, but I can't go. One year after another, probably our children will not take the same habits that we, we had. And so they will change even the social you know, behavior of, of our country, which we are very proud of. Now they sent us request for the 12 nuns whom they kidnapped, you know. We want, I don't know how much food, we want, I don't know how much medicine, we want uh, 100 terrorists who are arrested, we want you to free them. And yet when they took the nuns, they said, they are our guests, they are not, uh, you know, yeah. So, so the situation is really bad for our people, but the, the positive thing is that Almost all our people are united now against this terrorism. And no matter what it takes, we will not stop fighting this terrorism. And I really believe it is in the interest of the West and the world to help Syria fighting terrorism. And the last thing I want to say, Syria has a history of fighting terrorism. Because, as I said, it's like Australia. It is a melting pot of ethnicities and religions. In 1986, the late President Hafez al-Assad asked for convening a conference in Greece to define terrorism and to differentiate between terrorism and fighting against occupation. We also submitted a, re a Security Council resolution in 2003 in the UN to make the Middle East an air, a zone free of all mass destruction weapons. Syria has always been putting constructive initiative. When 9-11 happened in the United States, the Americans will tell you we were the ones who helped them save lives in Bahrain and somewhere else. We put all the information under their disposal of terrorists who are working in the area. We are culturally, historically against terrorism as people. And therefore, we will continue our battle it is a very painful battle. It is a very costly battle to our people, but we have no choice. We can't accept these people to come and prevail in our country. Uh, I thank you for coming here, and I'm ready to take questions you have so that I would be speaking about what you would like to hear rather than about what I would like to say.